Good afternoon, and welcome to another Moment with Madison. I know that many of you in your modern times are not so familiar with the events back in my day, and I thought it might be useful if I took you on a little timeline tour of my life. The great men of the Revolution, the Firebrands, were born in the 1720s and 1730s. Sam Adams, Patrick Henry, John Hancock, George Washington, King George III. Myself, Hamilton, Burr, Morris, we were born 20 years later. We were the young bucks. They defined the revolution. We were going to build the country that made that revolution real. We grew up under the shadow of the French and Indian War. It was a brutal war that included the massacre of prisoners and the slaughter of civilians. We overcame our adversaries and celebrated a glorious victory that ended European warfare in North America. Then, a mere two years later, Parliament passed the Stamp Act and things went downhill. At 18, I headed off to the College of New Jersey in Princeton for three years of intense study. I returned home exhausted and helped tutor my siblings. But things were happening in the outside world. The Boston Tea Party, Lexington and Concord, and I wanted to be part of it. I was elected to the Virginia State Legislature, where I met Thomas Jefferson, who soon became my closest friend. Then I was appointed to the Continental Congress, where I met Washington and Hamilton. We worked together so hard to get the states to pay their taxes without success. By some miracle, we won the war, but the states still didn't pay their taxes. Our economy was in a mess. Hamilton and I convinced Congress to allow us to call a constitutional convention in Philadelphia in 1787. By another miracle of heaven, we managed to produce a document which all the states could ratify, even Rhode Island. We elected George Washington president, and me, I was the Lion of the House of Representatives. We assumed the debts of the various states and started paying our loans. Mm -hmm. We established a capital to be along the Potomac. Hamilton started the first bank in the United States, and our economy went through the ceiling. And then, in the spring of 1794, I met the recently widowed Dolly Payne Todd. We were married in the fall, and life was beautiful. On the other side of the ocean, however, things were going to hell. The French Revolution had started, the king had been beheaded, our ships were being stopped by the French, by the British, by the pirates of Tripoli, by the pirates of the Caribbean. When John Adams was elected president, I returned to Montpelier with my wife. Thomas Jefferson was vice president, and I figured that he could handle things for a while. When he was elected in 1800, I joined him as his secretary of state. Things went very well at first, and then the Napoleonic War started, and our merchants were being robbed. They couldn't deliver to this port or that port. Cargo was being confiscated. Men were being pressed off of our ships and being forced to serve on British warships. On the bright side, Napoleon was running out of money, and he offered to sell us Louisiana for three cents an acre. I was concerned about the constitutionality of the deal, but I figured we could buy it now and figure out the details later. <laughs> At the glorious conclusion of Jefferson's presidency, I was elected. The economy was going gangbusters. My wife was turning Washington, D.C. into a light of excitement and glamour. Americans were having huge families. People were flooding into the West. It was great. We also lost 
15,000 men to the British impressment. That would be like 2 million Americans in your modern times. I tried bargaining with the French, I tried bargaining with the British, I tried an embargo, a non-importation agreement. It didn't make any difference. They didn't care. They didn't have to. And curiously enough, the Yankee merchants didn't care either. They were willing to risk the loss, and the seamen were willing to risk impressment. Nonetheless, I convinced Congress to declare war, and we fought the War of 1812, affectionately known as Mr. Madison's War. Militarily speaking, the war was a draw. Politically speaking, it was a glorious victory. Never had the country been so united, and never again would American ships be stopped in the high seas and our sailors abducted. I left Washington in 1817 on a steamboat and returned to Montpelier for the rest of my life. My good friend James Monroe was elected president and we entered the era of good feelings. I approved of John Quincy Adams and was horrified at Andrew Jackson. I passed on quietly at the age of 85 and was interred there in Montpelier. Dolly returned to Washington, D.C. for the last 13 years of her life, where she was feted at the Grand Dame. Everybody wanted to see Dolly. Everybody wanted to be seen with Dolly. And when she shuffled off this mortal coil, all of Washington went into mourning. Hers was the grandest funeral Washington, D.C. had ever seen. I hope this little tour of my life has been useful and it will allow you to understand how things were happening as we delve into some of the details of these and other events in another moment with Madison.